You are listening to This Week in High School Sports on X106. Trevor Mater joined with Kramer Sansone, who is back with us after spending a week on the beaches in Florida. And I wouldn't say it's the beaches. The beaches. You didn't, a, go, to the be- didn't, didn't go, go to the beach at all? Didn't go to the beach at all. Didn't have time. How far are the beaches from Orlando? It's a little bit, it's, isn't it? I think it's like 40 miles uh, either side. Did you I go think. to Disneyland, Disney World? Did I you? went to Disney Springs, which is downtown oh, is uh, Disney. So, I mean, that was pretty fun. Well, we're glad you're back with us uh, to talk some more uh, high school sports as we've gone each and every week here on X106. Uh, this show will air on Friday, and by the time you hear it, we'll be just about an hour away from Maryville High School football kickoff on X106. Wyatt Bell and Sam Steinmeier will be on the call. Reminder, all Maryville High School football broadcasts are brought to you by Nottaway Valley Bank. For more information, visit online at nvbank.com. Let's get into to some of the high school sports action going on this past week. We'll start with golf. The Maryville High School golf girls golf team participated in the Class 1 District 8 meet at St. Joe on Monday. Maryville took home second as a team with a score of 428. They were led by Laurel, Laurel Wickersham's score of 89. Emily Long shot a 93. And Stanbury won the team crown with a score of 409. Up next for the Spoofound Golf Squad, sectionals at St. Joe later this week. Uh, switching over to soccer, Maryville blinked Benton 6-0 on Tuesday. Jaden Hayes scored four goals, and Thomas DeStefano, I like that name, added two goals and was also responsible for three assists. Maryville is now 7-2-1 and one on the year, so that is a very good record for them right now. Up next, uh, they have a match on Friday with uh, Carthage at the Swope Soccer Village in Kansas City as part of the KC Showcase. Uh, switch over to tennis now on Tuesday. Swoofound Tennis picked up a 5-2 win over Trenton and Team Districts. Uh, kind of an interesting happenings there. We won't dive too much into those. They will compete against Savannah for the district championship on Wednesday nights. So by the time you'll have heard this, they'll have already competed. Up next, they'll participate in individual districts on Saturday in St. Joe. Uh, for its runner on with the cross country as Spoofhound Boys took home first place at the Savannah Invitational. Garrett Dumkey finished second. Zach Kaiser finished fifth. Chase Sims and and Cal Sterling, Cal Sterling, excuse me, finished sixth and seventh respectively. Mount City's Lane Zambles won the meet. West Nottaway finished fifth as a team and was led by Preston Bateman's fourth place finish. And on the girls' side of the event, Maryville finished sixth as a team. Laura Flinch. Feuerbacher. Feuerbacher. That's a that's a that's a mouthful yeah. right there. And Amy Feuerbacher got that one right. Finished eighth. Mount City S- S- Sanaya Meadows took home the top honors. Looking at volleyball action from this past week on Thursday, the Spoofhounds defeated Savannah in two sets, 25-21, 25-13. Kelsey Scott had four aces and two kills. Macy Lowe had two aces, one kill, and one dig. Morgan Steckline had 10 kills, and Serena Sundell had five kills, five digs, and one ace in the conference win. Up next for, for the Spoofhounds, they're at Benton on Thursday. They'll compete in a tournament at Benton on Saturday, and they will host Plattsburgh on Monday. Some other volleyball scores from around the area on Thursday. East Atchison defeated South Hold in three sets, and LeBlanc beat Benton in three. On Tuesday, East Atchison down Mountain City in two sets. Rockport beat West Nottaway in two, St. Joe Christian over Nottaway Holt in three, and LeBlanc defeated West Platte in three sets. So there's a look at all the happenings in, in a lot of the fall athletics. You've got volleyball, cross country, tennis, soccer, and golf, a multitude of sports going on. And we're kind of getting to the point now, too, Kramer, we're about a month or so away from those seasons winding down. You see golf's already getting into districts. Uh, tennis is getting into districts. You're not far from the state cross country meet in Missouri and uh, postseason soccer as well. Yeah, things are winding down right now, and uh, it's the uh, at the point where uh, during meets, matches, games, tournaments, anything like that, this is when you need that time to where you need to step up and start winning and keep going all the way throughout, even with tournament wise. And because uh, just so you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna start getting colder, so things yeah. are gonna start getting a little bit hectic for uh, some teams that are out that who participate in outdoor stuff. And uh, then we have uh, some basketball coming up here pretty soon, which is going to be very exciting yeah, for not all much, teams around Not us. much longer, and we'll get into some basketball, some wrestling, and Definitely. some other sports, and we'll make sure to give you our fullest coverage on those as well. We're going to take a real quick break on This Week in High School Sports. When we get back, we are going to talk some 275 Conference football. You're listening to This Week in High School Sports on X106. Welcome back in to This Week in High School Sports on X106. Trevor Mater, Kramer Sansone. Keeping up to date on everything going on in Northwest Missouri High School Athletics. We 
recap some volleyball, soccer, tennis, golf, cross country, all of that in the first segment. Now we're going to jump over to the 275, and uh, we're going to start off with some scores from last Friday night's football action. Uh, DeKalb defeated Northwest Nottoway 42-40. to The Tigers trailed 28-6 to at the half and came back. They were down six in the final seconds, got a game-tying touchdown, and then went for two. The two-point conversion was successful, and the Tigers get their first conference win of the season in a shootout. They were led by Darren McElfresh's 161 rushing yards and three scores. Coyote Henderson added two rushing scores. Carson Oberhauser and Dylan Carden each tossed two scores for the Northwest Nottoway Muskets. Carden also ran for a score and caught one as well. Tyler Bix hauled in three scores for Northwest Nottoway, but again, DeKalb picks up their first conference win in a 42-40 shootout over Northwest Nottoway. South Old Nottoway hold down Stewartsville 58-8. Drew Quinlan ran for three scores and added three more with his legs. Taryn Clark rushed for two. Eric Ottman, Brody Scroggins, and Reagan Morris all hauled in touchdown passes for the Spartans. Southwest Livingston down Platte Valley by a score of 52-6. to Mac Anderson did a little bit of everything for Southwest Livingston as he threw for 127 yards and three scores and rushed for 187 yards and three scores. Platte Valley's Dalton Luke had a solid game as well, rushing for 116 yards. Mountain City defeated East Atchison 62-12. Dylan Mars and Landon Papa each held a touchdown toss for the Panthers. Both quarterbacks also ran for two scores, as did T.J. Hopkins. Mount City now remains as the only unbeaten team in the 275 conference, and they control their own destiny in the hunt for the conference title with just three games remaining. Kramer, I know you didn't get the chance to take any football action in this weekend as you were chilling on the beaches in Florida or at Disneyland or wherever you were. But uh, just kind of, what are some of your takeaways from the 275 this week? Um, uh, the DeKalb win. I'm so I'm proud of them because I, I did cover them uh, two weeks ago when they played South Holt and Ottawa Holt, and uh, I mean they were back and forth during that time. And I'm really glad they finally got a win. Um, uh, and on a dramatic fashion too, winning 42 to 40. That's I, I'm I'm actually very happy that you said that. And uh, also the Mound City. Still going. Mountain City just yeah. rolling. They uh they showed that they are the team to beat in the two seventy five this year. You know, you talk about the DeCab, we're gonna talk to their head coach Caleb Wardlow here in just a moment. And this is a team that the first couple weeks the offense wasn't really there. And the last four weeks they've scored twenty two points, they've scored thirty six points, they've scored forty points. The offense has been there. They just haven't been able to get the breaks. And then on Friday night, down 28-6 to at halftime, he's able to, to rally the troops. They come back in dramatic fashion, pick up their first win. He'll be one of two coaches we hear from. We're also going to hear from King City head coach Micah Breckenridge here in a little bit. But a Mount City in control right now of the 275. East Atchison coming off. They came off a big win against Rockport. Uh, not quite the game they were hoping for against a really good Mountain City squad. So they suffered their second loss of the year. Rockport in non-conference play. We'll talk a little bit more about that game later. They dropped to King City as well. So they've got two losses on the year. Southwest Livingston, just one loss on the year, but that loss coming to Mountain City. And uh, Mountain City still got a date with Rockport. So they're not completely out of the woods yet. But right now, like I said, they, they are in charge of their own destiny. It's uh, it's looking really good. Um, uh, right now, you can already see the splits going out to see who's uh, middle teams, but lower level tier teams or top level tier teams. Uh, yeah, it's uh, a very exciting time for some football. And we'll talk a little bit more about postseason play in a little bit. But don't sleep on South Holt, not away Holt either. Uh, they are not afraid to throw the ball a lot. And Drew Quinlan is a playmaker. Yeah, I had the. I, I've seen Drew Quinlan play, and he went through nine touchdowns at the game. I I recovered. I think I think something, and, yeah, yes. something like that against the cab. Yeah, he had over 400 passing yards. And Drew Quinlan is a person to uh, not uh, not mess around with. Uh, make sure to put some pressure on him. Yeah, the 275 is the best it's been in quite some time. I feel like top to bottom, and uh, we'll preview more of the 275 later on in the show and look at the district standings right now as far as how things will probably shake out. For the postseason, as I mentioned, we did get the opportunity to catch up with the head coach of the Cab Tigers, Caleb Wardlow. The Tigers picked up their first conference win of the season in dramatic fashion, trailing 22 points at halftime, coming back in the final seconds to beat Northwest Nottoway. They've got a chance to make it two in a row this week when they take on Platte Valley. Platte Valley excuse me. So we'll hear from the head football coach of the Cab Tigers, Caleb Wardlow, on this week in high school sports. Welcome back in to This Week in High School Sports on X106. Trevor Mater, Kramer Sansone, keeping up to date on everything going on in Northwest Missouri High School Athletics. We 
recap some volleyball, soccer, tennis, golf, cross country, all of that in the first segment. Now we're going to jump over to the 275, and uh, we're going to start off with some scores from last Friday night's football action. Uh, DeKalb defeated Northwest Nottoway 42-40. The Tigers trailed 28-6 at the half and came back. They were down six in the final seconds, got a game-tying touchdown, and then went for two. The two-point conversion was successful, and the Tigers get their first conference win of the season in a shootout. They were led by Darren McElfresh's 161 rushing yards and three scores. Coyote Henderson added two rushing scores. Carson Oberhauser and Dylan Carden each tossed two scores for the Northwest Nottoway Muskets. Carden also ran for a score and caught one as well. Tyler Bix hauled in three scores for Northwest Nottoway, but again, DeCap picks up their first conference win in a 42-40 shootout over Northwest Nottoway. South Old Nottoway hold down Stewartsville 58-8. Drew Quinlan ran for three scores and added three more with his legs. Taryn Clark rushed for two. Eric Ottman, Brody Scroggins, and Reagan Morris all hauled in touchdown passes for the Spartans. Southwest Livingston down Platte Valley by a score of 52-6. to Mac Anderson did a little bit of everything for Southwest Livingston as he threw for 127 yards and three scores and rushed for 187 yards and three scores. Platte Valley's Dalton Luke had a solid game as well, rushing for 116 yards. Mound City defeated East Atchison 62-12. Dylan Mars and Landon Papa each held a touchdown toss for the Panthers. Both quarterbacks also ran for two scores, as did T.J. Hopkins. Mountain City now remains as the only unbeaten team in the 275 Conference, and they control their own destiny in the hunt for the conference title with just three games remaining. Kramer, I know you didn't get the chance to take any football action in this weekend as you were chilling on the beaches in Florida or at Disneyland or wherever you were. But uh, just kind of, what are some of your takeaways from the 275 this week? Um, uh, the DeKalb win. I'm so I'm proud of them because I, I did cover them uh, two weeks ago when they played South Holt and Ottawa Holt, and uh, I mean they were back and forth during that time. And I'm really glad they finally got a win. Um, uh, and on a dramatic fashion too, winning 42 to 40. That's I, I'm I'm actually very happy that you said that. And uh, also the Mound City still going mountain city just yeah. rolling they uh they show that they're the team to beat in the 275 this year you know you talk about the cab we're going to talk to their head coach caleb wardlow here in just a moment and this is a team that the first couple weeks the offense wasn't really there and the last four weeks they've scored 22 points they've scored 36 points they've scored 40 points the offense has been there they just haven't been able to get the breaks and then on friday night down 28 to 6 at halftime he's able to to rally the troops they come back in dramatic fashion pick up their first win he'll be one of two coaches we hear from we're also going to hear from king city head coach micah breckenridge here in a little bit but a mount city in control right now of the 275 east atchison coming off they came off a big win against rockport uh, not quite the game they were hoping for against a really good Mountain City squad. So they suffered their second loss of the year. Rockport in non-conference play. We'll talk a little bit more about that game later. They dropped to King City as well. So they've got two losses on the year. Southwest Livingston, just one loss on the year, but that loss coming to Mound City. And uh, Mound City still got a date with Rockport. So they're not completely out of the woods yet. But right now, like I said, they, they are in charge of their own destiny. It's uh, it's looking really good. Um, uh, right now, you can already see the splits going out to see who's uh, middle teams, but lower level tier teams or top level tier teams. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, very exciting time for some football. And we'll talk a little bit more about postseason play in a little bit. But don't sleep on South Holt, not away Holt either. Uh, they are not afraid to throw the ball a lot. And Drew Quinlan is a playmaker. Yeah, I had the. I, I've seen Drew Quinlan play, and he what, threw nine touchdowns in the game. I I recovered. I think I think something and, yeah yes. something like that against the cab. Yeah, he had over 400 passing yards. And Drew Quinlan is a person to uh, not to not mess around with. Uh, make sure to apply some pressure on him. Yeah, the 275 is the best it's been in quite some time. I feel like top to bottom, and uh, we'll preview more of the 275 later on in the show and look at the district standings right now as far as how things will probably shake out for the postseason. As I mentioned, we did get the opportunity to catch up with the head coach of the Cab Tigers, Caleb Wardlow. The Tigers picked up their first conference win of the season in dramatic fashion, trailing 22 points at halftime, coming back in the final seconds to beat Northwest Nottoway. They've got a chance to make it two in a row this week when they take on Platte Valley. Platte Valley excuse me. So we'll hear from the head football coach of the Cab Tigers, Caleb Wardlow, on this week in high school sports. Welcome back in to This Week in High School Sports on X106. Trevor Mater, Kramer Sansone, keeping up to date on everything going on in Northwest Missouri High School Athletics. We 
recap some volleyball, soccer, tennis, golf, cross country, all of that in the first segment. Now we're going to jump over to the 275, and uh, we're going to start off with some scores from last Friday night's football action. Uh, DeKalb defeated Northwest Nottoway 42 to 40. The Tigers trailed 28 to 6 at the half and came back. They were down six in the final seconds, got a game tying touchdown, and then went for two. The two point conversion was successful, and the Tigers get their first conference win of the season in a shootout. They were led by Darren McElfresh's 161 rushing yards and three scores. Coyote Henderson added two rushing scores. Carson Oberhauser and Dylan Carden each tossed two scores for the Northwest Nottoway Muskets. Carden also ran for a score and caught one as well. Tyler Bix hauled in three scores for Northwest Nottoway, but again, DeCab picks up their first conference win in a 42-40 shootout over Northwest Nottoway. South Old Nottoway hold down Stewartsville 58-8. Drew Quinlan ran for three scores and added three more with his legs. Taryn Clark rushed for two. Eric Ottman, Brody Scroggins, and Reagan Morris all hauled in touchdown passes for the Spartans. Southwest Livingston down Platte Valley by a score of 52-6. Mac Anderson did a little bit of everything for Southwest Livingston as he threw for 127 yards and three scores and rushed for 187 yards and three scores. Platte Valley's Dalton Luke had a solid game as well, rushing for 116 yards. Mountain City defeated East Atchison 62-12. Dylan Mars and Landon Papa each held a touchdown toss for the Panthers. Both quarterbacks also ran for two scores, as did T.J. Hopkins. Mount City now remains as the only unbeaten team in the 275 conference, and they control their own destiny in the hunt for the conference title with just three games remaining. Kramer, I know you didn't get the chance to take any football action in this weekend as you were chilling on the beaches in Florida or at Disneyland or wherever you were. But uh, just kind of, what are some of your takeaways from the 275 this week? Um, uh, the DeCab win. I'm so I'm proud of them because I, I did cover them uh, two weeks ago when they played South Holt and Ottawa Holt, and uh, I mean they were back and forth during that time. And I'm really glad they finally got a win. Um, uh, and on a dramatic fashion too, winning 42 to 40. That's I, I'm I'm actually very happy that you said that. And uh, also the Mound City still going mountain city just yeah. rolling they uh they showed that they are the team to beat in the 275 this year you know you talk about the cab we're going to talk to their head coach caleb wardlow here in just a moment and this is a team that the first couple weeks the offense wasn't really there and the last four weeks they've scored 22 points they've scored 36 points they've scored 40 points the offense has been there they just haven't been able to get the breaks and then on friday night down 28 to 6 at halftime he's able to to rally the troops they come back in dramatic fashion pick up their first win he'll be one of two coaches we hear from we're also going to hear from king city head coach micah breckenridge here in a little bit but a mount city in control right now of the 275 east atchison coming out they came off a big win against rockport uh, not quite the game they were hoping for against a really good Mountain City squad. So they suffered their second loss of the year. Rockport in non-conference play. We'll talk a little bit more about that game later. They dropped to King City as well. So they've got two losses on the year. Southwest Livingston, just one loss on the year, but that loss coming to Mountain City. And uh, Mountain City still got a date with Rockport. So they're not completely out of the woods yet. But right now, like I said, they, they are in charge of their own destiny. It's uh, it's looking really good. Um, uh, right now, you can already see the splits going out to see who's uh, middle teams, but lower level tier teams or top level tier teams. Uh, yeah, it's uh, a very exciting time for some football. And we'll talk a little bit more about postseason play in a little bit. But don't sleep on South Holt, not away Holt either. Uh, they are not afraid to throw the ball a lot. And Drew Quinlan is a playmaker. Yeah, I had the. I, I've seen Drew Quinlan play, and he what, threw nine touchdowns in the game. I I recovered. I think I think something and, yeah yes. something like that against DeCab. Yeah, he had over 400 passing yards. And Drew Quinlan is a person to uh, not to not mess around with. Uh, make sure to put some pressure on him. Yeah, the 275 is the best it's been in quite some time. I feel like top to bottom, and uh, we'll preview more of the 275 later on in the show and look at the district standings right now as far as how things will probably shake out. For the postseason, as I mentioned, we did get the opportunity to catch up with the head coach of the Cab Tigers, Caleb Wardlow. The Tigers picked up their first conference win of the season in dramatic fashion, trailing 22 points at halftime, coming back in the final seconds to beat Northwest Nottoway. They've got a chance to make it two in a row this week when they take on Platte Valley. Platte Valley excuse me. So we'll hear from the head football coach of the Cab Tigers, Caleb Wardlow, on this week in high school sports. You're listening to This Week in High School Sports on X106. It's now time for another Coach's Corner. 
For this one, we're going to talk some football in the 275 conference with the head football coach of the DeKalb Tigers, Coach Caleb Wardwell. Coach, how are we going today? Uh, good, good, good. You know, just kind of talk about uh, six games into the season right now. You guys stand at two and four, picked up your first conference win last week. Uh, what do you know about this team? Um, well, this week, uh, <clears throat> Platte Valley, I mean, they're, um, they got, they got some good pieces and it's one of those things no matter, uh, you know, if they're up and we're down or we're down and they're up or vice versa, you know, we always seem to play a close game with them and, and it's been that way for the last several years that, uh, no matter what, it's always, it's always very, very close. So I anticipate, you know, being another close game. Um, you know, we line up with them fairly, fairly okay. Uh, they got a couple, couple good kids. The Luke kids, he's a, he's, a, he's very, very solid. So, uh, our key's gonna have to be, you know, we have to slow him down because he's, he's probably gonna get, he's probably gonna get his, but we just have to slow him down as best we can. What are some of the things from your team that you've seen that, that you've liked so far? Um, well, early in the year, we had some kids out that, that have never played before, but they decide to come out there. I mean, they're very athletic, uh, and so they just don't, know the the concepts really of football because they've never played not even at like the junior high level so uh them coming out really helped but the problem was early in the year we were kind of kind of rough uh, around the edges so they're starting to learn and understand uh responsibilities and just you know how to play the game so i do like how how we are starting to come together and we're starting to you know play more as a team in, in that respect and then we've got some some kids who are really stepping up and kind of changing you know the They've kind of had some, you know, me first type attitudes in the past, but this year I think it's, you know, we've had a couple pretty down years of, of a lot of losing a lot of ball games, and and these kids have really, you know, changed their attitudes as far as you know changing it from a, a me first type of player to a to a team first type attitude, and I think that's you know the young kids are really catching on and, and listening to those guys more, and you know we just have a lot more leaders and things like that as, uh, on this team. Who are some of the kids that have been stepping up and filling those leadership roles this year? Uh, the, the one that comes to mind would be Coyote Henderson. Uh, he he's a kid. He's you know he's been he's got playing time from his freshman year on due to injury, and then you know we've had so low numbers sophomore and junior, and, and this year we've our numbers are up just a little bit. Uh, he's he's had to play every position on on the field with the exception of center. Uh, I mean, he, he's typically our starting fullback, but a couple games ago we had, you know, one quarterback out and two got hurt in the game, so he had to go back to quarterback. So he's he's been able to play numerous numerous positions, and we've even asked him to play a little bit of O line in certain certain situations and certain formations and things like that. That you know, and he's really he's really changed his attitude. He's one that I I, I mean, he stepped up he stepped up a lot as far as changing his attitude and helping out the younger guys because. I don't know if it's a senior thing, but it, it's finally sinking in that, you know, there's only so many ball games left, and if he's going to make his mark on this program, then he's he's got to do something about it. So he's he's the number one when I think of, uh, you know, the kids that's changed. It's really up their, up their leadership levels. You guys, in your first two games, scored 14 points and six points. Your last four, the offense has kind of found a rhythm with 40, 22, 36. And 42. I know a couple of those have been in a losing effort, but uh, I'm sure lately you've had to, had to be proud of the offensive productivity you guys have kind of found here midseason. Uh, I mean, yes and no. Um, early on, you know, Rockport that first game, we were, uh, I mean, we we did not play very well. We had a lot of, I mean, we had like something like 10 fumbles, and that's not even an exaggeration. Uh, so we do try to clean that up a little bit. Um, we come back with Joe Howie with a pretty good week, and then, you know. We, Offensively, we we can do some good things. Uh, once we hit that East Ashton game, they roughed us up pretty good, so um, that score is a little bit deceptive. I think it was probably a little bit. I mean, it wasn't as close as what the score kind of appeared. We got some late kind of touchdowns, but that was good for the young kids to get in and and get some. But but you're right. We 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 can do good things offensively. It's just a matter of uh, you know knowing where we're going. We still we still sometimes struggle with. You know, knowing simple things like where we're going, uh, so we have to make sure we rep, rep just offensive sets and stuff like that, and and just make sure we know where we're going and doing the right thing because we can we can put up some points, but it's just a matter of knowing our assignments and you know doing doing what we have to do to to, to score. You guys picked up your first conference win of the year with a 42-40 win of the Northwest Nautilus last week. Uh, 
just kind of talk about that game, a thrilling game that kind of came down to the wire, and it's got to feel good to get that first conference win of the year when the 275 has been tough this year. Yeah, the 275 uh, top to bottom is, is you know, is, is pretty solid. Uh, the thing with the thing with our game last Friday, uh, I mean, we were down 28-6 at halftime, and you know, give give Northwest Nottoway credit, they came out and they kind of hit us in the mouth, and I, I don't I don't know if our kids were ready, and maybe that's partially my fault, but I mean, they they jumped on us early. We didn't play well. Uh, at one point, we had like six penalties in seven plays. It's just simple things like jumping off sides or a pass interference or something like that. So early on, you know, they we didn't we didn't play very well. But if you go back and look at the film, it was things like um, you know busted coverages and things like that where we think the quarterback's scrambling, so our D backs peel off the receivers and he just floats it over the top, and they got a couple easy scores like that. Second half, we really buckled down, um, and you know we were able to. We, we saw some things we liked, and we were able to hit them for a few big plays. And what really helped was our defense kind of stepped up, and you know we made our adjustments as far as the coverages and things like that went. And we kind of slowed their offense down enough to uh, you know score, and then we ended up scoring uh, the touchdown to tie the game with about oh, what, 10 or 12 seconds left, and we got the two point conversion to go up there. And then it was you know a kick and a you know just say go make sure we tackle the kid. Uh, and I mean, but it was you know, regardless, it was a good to get a win. A win is a win. That's what I tell the guys, no matter what. It, you know, they can't take that away from you. Nobody can take that win away. So it's good to always get the win. It's good to get the conference win. Uh, I wish we would have, you know, played a little bit better there in that first half and you know done some correct things because we we still we still got a lot of mistakes whenever we break down the film and look. We still got a lot of mistakes that we've got to clean up or you know we're we may not win another game if we don't if we don't clean up our mistakes. But I, I think we will and I think we can. I think we can clean it up, and I think we can do some good things. Down 28-6 to six at halftime last week. Uh, what did you say to your team at halftime? Well, it's one of those things I said, you know, first and foremost, you know, we can't get too high on the high, can't get too low on the lows. This team, I told them, I, I didn't say this till after the game, but I told them this team, uh, you know, last year and the year before probably would have quit on each other. And I said, you guys didn't, so I have to give you credit credit for that. You know, if you stay level-headed, you don't. bad things are going to happen on a football game. You're going to give up a big play. And I told them at halftime, I said, hey, we, we took their best hit. Just forget about it. Forget about that first half because you're not going to get all the points back at one time. You've got to go one drive at a time. You've got to score and you got to get a stop. And you've got to score and you got to get a stop. So, uh, you know, I basically just said forget about Forget about the first half. We'll focus on the second half. And if we do the things we need to do, then it will take care of itself. And it, it ended up, you know, take care of itself. And, you know, they, they stepped up when they needed to. And, you know, we got out of there with the win. Looking at your remaining three regular season games, Platte Valley, Mound City, and Stewartsville to end the season, what's kind of maybe the, the expectation or the goal to close out the regular season? Well, you always want to end uh, on a high note before you get into district play. Um, like I said earlier, uh, Platte Valley, they are, they no matter if we're undefeated and they haven't won a game or if they're undefeated and we haven't, it's going to be a close game, I think. Uh, they've got some playmakers, and I'd like to give them in space. I mean, they do a good job of getting the ball into kids that, that do good things for them. They do a very good job of that. So we've got to be able to shut them down uh, going forward. But we match up well. Mountain City, Mountain City, Mountain City is going to be tough, I think. Uh, they're bringing a lot back, and they're they're pretty solid. And I know that they've, you know, they're they're probably at the top of the conference, and they can run deep into the postseason. So um, they're they're pretty solid. So we're going to have to bring it uh, that week. Stewartsville's one that. Um, depending on what kind of team of ours shows up, you know, that could be a competitive game. I know they like to air it out quite a bit, uh, so we'll have to rep a lot of pass D and things like that and looking at some um, different coverages and things like that to go after them. But uh, I think if we play well and we, we know what we're doing, I think that can be a good game for us as well. I think that can be pretty competitive moving in uh, to districts. So, you know, it's just a matter of we got to worry about ourselves and we got to fix our issues and then – we can move forward and see if we can get a couple wins here late in the season. Talking to DeKalb head football coach Caleb Wardlow here on this weekend. High school sports, the Tigers are two and four in the season, picked up their first conference win last week, going to try to go for two in a row this week when they host Platte Valley. Coach, thank you for your time, and best of luck Friday night and the rest of the season. Thanks, appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, we're going to take a real quick break. You're listening to this weekend high school sports on X106. 
Welcome back to This Week in High School Sports on X106. Trevor Mater joined by Kramer Sansone, who has decided to come home from the beaches of Orlando, Florida. I guess there's not really beaches yeah, in Orlando, Florida, but he I, came I, back I, from, I know what you mean. How warm was it down there, by the way? So it was 93 Holy every cow. day, and it was humid. And think about it. I came back on Saturday and when it was, it was like rainy and 43. 40. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sure you were thinking of us when you were I, I wish riding I would. the roller coasters at Disneyland. <laughs> Um, if I had time for but, that. Yeah, good to have you back. Yeah, we were joined last week by former sports director X16, Devin Albertson, who's kind of now our residential eight-man analyst, and we had a good show, but glad to have Kramer back from the beaches of Florida. Why don't we go ahead and jump into some of the, the Grand River Conference action from this past Friday, Kramer? So let's dive on in as uh, Albany defeated Bramer 66-18. to Harrison uh, Kuchner threw for 229 yards and five touchdowns and ran for another two. Uh, Trace Floyd carried the rock nine times for 147 yards and two scores. Caden Hutchinson uh, caught four touchdowns from Kuchner and racked up 216 yards and just four catches. Bramer quarterback Keaton Odell threw for 146 yards and two scores. Once again, Albany defeated Bramer 66-18. Unbeaten Stanberry defeated North Andrew 44-36 in a thriller. Trey Schneiber ran for 186 yards and three scores, and Cole Darbin threw for a score and ran for one. Logan Hughes led North Andrew with three rushing for three rushes for uh, for scores. Yeah, so three touchdowns for him. <laughs> so Stanberry once again defeated North Andrew 44-36 in Pattonsburg. Picked up a, a non-conference win over Norborn. As Hayden Central, uh, by a score of 60-8, to eight, Steve Whitley threw for 329 yards and six scores. He also ran for one. Cameron Jones and Patrick Cowley, Cowley each caught two scores. Trevor Ireland, Dakota Eaton, and Patrick Emig each caught a score for the Panthers, who are now 5-1 and one on the year. So, Pattonsburg won a, won a non-conference game. And defending state champions, Worth County defeated St. Joe Christian 52-0. Quarterback Jacob New threw for a score. Caleb uh, Parman ran for two. Andrew Alcon and Alex Richhart uh, each added a score for the Tigers. King City defeated the Rockport in a non-conference battle on Friday night by the score of 66-20. to Quarterback Colin Breckenridge threw for three scores and added three more with his legs. Jacob Moan ran for two, and Rockport Gavin Abbott ran for 112 yards and two scores. Joey Heron also added a score for the Blue Jays. So not, wow. not really a lot of surprises no. in, in the GRC this week. Stanbury and North Andrew, that was that was maybe one of the better eight-man games this year. A thrilling 44-36 win for the Bulldogs as they remain unbeaten. I was kind of following that game on Friday night as I was out and about covering a, a high school football game way up in northern Iowa. And when I looked at the score at the end of the third quarter, and I, it was, I think, a four-point game, I thought, man, North Andrew's really got a chance. And they hung with them, couldn't quite get it done. And I think this is maybe a sign that North Andrew is uh, don't let their 3-3 three and three record fool you. This is a team that could maybe kind of do some damage late in the season, and they've got a district where it's not inconceivable to say that even though a down year for North Andrew, it could result in a trip to the state championship as uh, they were able to hang with Stanbury. Came up just a tad short, but... Who knows if they meet again? Uh, that's uh, that conference is just. I mean, it's, it's honestly, bananas. It can go either way for any team in the conference. Uh, it's just uh, it's up and down. But then again, it, seriously, anybody can easily take over control. And Albany, they had a tough schedule to begin the season as well, and they're kind of playing some really good football. We heard from their head coach Doug Fountain last week, and they're three and three right now, and they've still got a couple tough tests ahead of them. But they've already taken on Worth County. They've already taken on Stanbury. And uh, they look to finish the season on a high note. Pattonsburg's been the team I've been really impressed with this year. Steven Wilhite has just been a mean green touchdown throwing machine. Six more scores on Friday night, 329 yards. This offense is explosive. They've got a huge test this week, though, with unbeaten defending state champion Worth County. And uh, then the big one will come up here in a couple weeks when Stanbury and Worth County take on each other. We'll try to get both head coaches between now and then. We'll see if we can get that to work out. So that's going to be a battle of... Assuming both teams remain undefeated, uh, number one against number two in the state, and it will also determine the conference champion, the district champion. So there will be a lot on the line. Between the four districts, uh, I love how there's only there's still four teams that are yeah. still undefeated. Yeah, and, uh, it's going to be interesting. And it's it's not going to happen to where, like, of course, teams want to be undefeated the entire season, but going into that District 1 with Worth County and Stanbury in, in a couple of weeks, that's uh, someone's going uh, someone's gonna to lose, someone's going to win. Yeah, one of the and, and there's gonna be a lot of line too. I mean, if you're the winner, you get the one seed. You got home field advantage throughout the 
the district playoffs. We'll talk a little bit more about that towards the end of the show and also look at some of the little bit of changes in the straight up sports eight man rankings this week. As I mentioned, we were able to catch up with the head football coach in the Grand River Conference, and that being the head coach of the King City Wildcats, Micah Breckenridge. His Wildcats, 3-3, three and three, but don't let that record fool you. They have lost to the top three teams in, or three of the top four teams so far in eight-man with Worth County, Stanbury, and Pattonsburg, and two of those three were on the road. So some tough drops for them, but they're 3-3 three and three right now. His son Colin has been playing exceptionally well, and they have their eyes set on a big prize. So let's hear from the head football coach of the King City Wildcats, Micah Breckenridge, on This Week in High School Sports. You're listening to This Week in High School Sports on X106. Time now for another Coach's Corner. For this one, we're going to go to the Grand River Conference and talk some football with the head coach of the King City Wildcats, one Micah Breckenridge. Coach, uh, thank you for joining us. How's it going today? Oh, it's going great. Glad to, glad I could join you guys and glad to, glad you want to have me on your show. Absolutely. Just kind of talk about the, the beginning of the season for you guys, 3-3 three and three on the season, but that record... Maybe just a little bit deceiving, as you guys had one tough schedule to start the year. Well, what have you seen from your team, or what do you know about your team so far through six games? Yeah, you know, uh, we've, we've kind of had the same schedule, uh, well, the last three years now. Uh, and and those first two years, uh, you know, start out with, you know, defending state champions, you know, as far as North Andrew goes, and then we threw C. Stanbury, uh, you know, and then, and then – Last year, you know, with county wins, so those are all, you know, in the front of our schedule, so our, our schedule was definitely, you know, loaded, you know, front heavy, um, but, you know, I, in the past, I was, you know, I think that's been a good thing for us, uh, you know, so right out of the gate, uh, you know, we, we had to figure out, you know, as a team where we're at real quick, and, and uh, you, know, you know, at that point, we know, you know, the things we've got to work on to get better. Uh, you know, as opposed to maybe seeing that team, you know, week eight or nine and then, and then not having, you know, that opportunity to try to improve those things. So, uh, you know, I, I kind of like our schedule. It, it really lets us know where we're at. Uh, you know, and, and this year, uh, you know, Pat and Bird has, has been a, you know, a very good football team and we've seen those guys early. Uh, you know, so I guess so far, uh, you know, we've kind of, you know, we, we, we've been, we're headed in the right direction. Uh, uh, week two, our our starting running back got hurt, uh, so we we've been with, without him, you know, kind of through the majority of this front half of the of the season. And that's hurt us, uh, you know, as far as our running game goes. Uh, that's pretty much kind of kind of limited us to to mainly a passing team, uh, and you know, teams have been able to kind of you know kind of pin their ears back and just kind of add us to the passing game. So. You know, that, that's kind of hurt us offensively, but, uh, he, uh, he is now on the, on the road back to playing, and actually, uh, we got to play him offensively last week versus Rockport, so it uh, definitely will be, uh, you know, be a positive for us once we get, once we get Jacob Owen back in the backfield and, and get him going, and, uh, you know, that'll allow us to, you know, have that, have that dual threat offensively, uh, you know, as the season is. You know, winding down and, and we head towards the playoffs. Talk about that win last week against the Rockport team that came in with just one loss, but you guys were able to, to take care of business there. What did you see from your team that you were impressed with? Yeah, you know, I thought, uh, you know, number one, you know, we were, you know, going into the game two or three, and like you said, Rockport was four and one. So just our, you know, just our, my players, you know, mindset and attitude. Uh, you know, in that game, I was pleased with that, uh, you know, because any time you go into that type of record, you know, kids, you know, kind of have a, I guess, a predetermined, uh, you know, mindset of, of the outcome of football game. But, but our kids came in hungry, especially, uh, you know, after the, you know, facing the, the previous three opponents and being on a few games, uh, losing kids. So I was happy how our kids bounced back, uh, so they, they competed. Uh, you know, and we've been, you know, that, that week leading up to Rockport, you know, the kids knew kind of some of the things that, you know, we needed to focus on, uh, you know, as a, as an individual player, as a football player, you know, to, to get better and to do those things better in order to be successful. So, 
you know, like I said, our, our tailback was back, which, you know, that made a huge difference, uh, you know, which, which allowed us to, to run the ball. And, and uh, you know, he had, he had a pretty good football game, had a couple touchdowns. Uh, you know, we did kind of play him, you know, with, with limited touches just to, to make sure that, uh, you know, he, he remains healthy throughout the, the remainder of the year. But offensively, our, our kids, you know, were kind of firing on all cylinders and able, you know, we were able to get the ball in the end zone, put up several points. And defensively, uh, I think is, is kind of where our kids played really well. Uh, you know, again, you know, our, our running back is, you know, has been one of our, you know, main, main players on the defensive side. So we've been, you know, without him as well, uh, but we, we've, uh, kind of opted not to, not to play him on the defensive side. So we've had some other kids, some younger kids, even some freshmen step up. Uh, those kids did a really good job defensively for us, uh, especially against Rockport. So, you know, we're you know, always towards the end of the year and you want to, uh, you know, be playing your best football. And I, I think we're headed in that direction right now. Who are some of the kids that have been stepping up for you this year? Well, we've got a couple, uh, couple freshmen and Parker Buff and Sawyer McCallum. Uh, Parker, he, he's actually been a starter for us, uh, and every supporter in this year. And, uh, you know, week one versus North Andrew, he, uh, you know, did a good job, but, you know, made a lot of freshman mistakes. And, and uh, he has matured and improved and, uh, just, just so proud of how he's been playing. You know, I would, I would no longer consider him a freshman, even though he is. He, you know, he's playing like a, like a sophomore and junior. And, um, you know, I, he's, uh, you know, he's going to be a good one for us, uh, you know, because we get three more years out of him. So this experience that he's getting is, is just, you know, invaluable. But, uh, you know, just proud of those, those freshmen. Uh, you know, and then some of our other, you know, just, you know, our seniors and, and juniors, uh, you know, those kids have, have, you know, pretty much starting now for the past three years. And, uh, you know, my, my quarterback and Colin Breckenridge is definitely one of our team leaders. Usually he gets going, the rest of our team, uh, you know, gets on a roll as well. And, um, some of our, you know, we got a senior, Liam Mitchell up front. Uh, he's kind of the leader, leader of our line on both sides of the football. And, uh, you know, he's, he, uh, He's been playing well and kind of demands that, um, you know, out of his, out of the other linemen up front. So some of those kids have, have stepped up big for us, uh, you know, and, and, and those are the type of kids that we need to, you know, step up and, and lead us, you know, when the playoffs begin. Looking ahead, just three weeks left in the regular season before we roll to the postseason. Is there any one particular area that you feel like you're, you'd like to see improvement from your team on in the next couple of weeks before we get into the postseason? Well, you know, like I said, with, with our tailback coming back, uh, we've got to continue to work on improving our own make sure that, uh, you know, that we don't strictly rely on our passing game or, or get in a situation, you know, where we're always, always going to throw the ball. So we want to be able to make sure offensively, uh, you know, that, that we can run and throw the ball, uh, you know, and, and get the job done up front. Uh, Defensively, uh, you know, we, we just got to continue, you know, especially, you know, at the eight man level, uh, you know, one missed tackle can, can lead to, you know, lead to a big play or, or a touchdown. So, you know, we, we continue to work on the fundamentals and, and you know, tackling, uh, is a big one of those that we got to continue to work on. Uh, and then, you know, and then, you know, just little things, just like, you know, how to line up and make sure we do our assignment. You know, lining up defensively is, is half the battle. Uh, you know, and then that sounds, you know, that sounds simple, but, you know, you, you watch football on, on Sunday afternoon and, and the professional is in offensive formation. So, you know, getting lined up is, uh, is where it all starts. You know, just so that we have our kids in, in position to make plays. Uh, you know, that, uh, that's, you know, one thing we work on. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's just, you know, it's one of the other things that's hard to, you know, hard to coach or, or teach is just that, you know, they trust the guy next to them. And, and, uh, you know, a lot of times when kids don't do that, they're going to try to do, do a job that is not theirs. And then, uh, you know, then we're out of position and bad things happen. So, you know, you know believing and, and relying on that guy next to you, uh, 
know, is, is, is what good football teams do. And, and, you know, that's, that's, I guess, what you call chemistry in a football team, uh, you know, when everybody's working together, when everybody trusts the guy next to them. So, so those are some things that, you know, we're going to have to, you know, have to uh, accomplish, focus on, you know, here's the season winding down and, and we head into the playoffs. Looking at the postseason in your guys' district, you don't have to you don't have to worry about Stanbury or Worth County in your district, but you still got Pattonsburg, Southwest Livingston, and North Shelby who are all five and one. Uh, just kind of what's the goal or the expectation when it does come postseason time? Yeah, you know, uh, you know we've you know won, we've won that district the last two years, and, and the first uh, the two years ago we headed in, I think it was the number two seed, and last year we were. We were the number one seed heading in, but, uh, you know, you know, definitely, you know, we've played Pattenburg and, and we know what they're all about and I know that the uh, Southwest Livingston, uh, we've actually faced, faced them in the last two years of this third title game. Uh, you know, we don't get to play them in the, in the regular season, but, uh, you know, they're, like I said, they're, like they're one loss right now. Um, uh, they're playing really good football. North Shelby, you know, we don't, don't know a lot about them. Uh, with uh you know them being over in the eastern part of the state. But you know, we're you know, all all we can do right now is focus on, you know, the the last few games here in the season. Uh, you know, after week nine we'll see where you know, see where we ended up, see who we gotta face. And uh, you know, at that point we're gonna take it one game at a time. Uh, you know, when it when it comes down to it, doesn't matter who we have, you know, we're gonna have to have to beat you know, every team, if we want to get to that final game, which is, uh, you know, the, the last two years we've been to the state semifinals and, and we've not been able to get by that game. So that's, uh, you know, that's, that's one of their focuses this year of, of getting that done. And, uh, and, you know, I think their kids are going to be ready to, to, you know, to play whoever, whoever steps on the field. Talking to King City head coach Micah Breckenridge on this week in high school sports. Coach, one last question. You guys have Bramer this week. Uh, what have you seen from him, and what's it going to take you to win on Friday night? Well, you know, uh, and in the you know, it, it's like this every Friday night in the in the DRC. It's it's a tough tough conference, and uh, you know, even though their their record, uh, you know, has has not been favorable for them this year, and they've been you know hit by injury. Uh, early in the season, have some of those kids back, uh, you know, but they, uh, they've got some really good skill guys in the backfield and some big kids up front. Uh, I think those guys have been back from injury. They, they continue to get better, uh, you know, and show, you know, improvement. So, you know, we, we need to come out and, you know, one, focus on the things that we need to do, uh, you know, and, and just try to take care of business and, and you know, no matter the score, you know, we need to get better, uh, you know, when, when the game comes to an end Friday night. So, you know, we, our main focus is just us and, uh, worrying about the things that we need to do to get better at the football team. Talking to King City head football coach Micah Breckenridge is right now the Wildcats are three and three on the season, but don't underlook their three and three record as they are capable of making a run in the postseason. Coach, thank you for your time and best of luck this week and down the road and when we get to postseason play. Oh, I appreciate it and glad to, uh, to be on the show. Thanks a lot. All right, we're going to take a real quick break. You're listening to This Week in High School Sports on X106. Welcome back to This Week in High School Sports on X106. Time now to look at what went on in the Midland Empire Conference this past week. A total of four conference games there. And uh, it began with Maryville picking up a very impressive 58-8 win over Benton. Eli Dallas rushed for 138 yards and three scores. Tyler Houchin added 135 yards and two scores. Connor Weiss rushed for a touchdown and caught one as well. Savannah took care of, of Cameron 77-20. to The Savages remain unbeaten in Midland Empire Conference play. They have a big matchup the, this next upcoming week, not this one, but the one after, against Maryville. St. Pius X downed Bishop LeBlanc by a score of 51-26. to And Lafayette, they're now 5-1 and in the season. They defeated Chillicothe 56-6. to Quick look at your Midland Empire Conference standings. Maryville 5-1 and in the season, 4-0 and in conference play. Savannah, they're four and two on the season. They're the only other conference unbeaten right now. Lafayette is five and one on the season, three and one in conference play. St. Pius X, four and two overall, three and one in conference play. 
Chillicothe one and five, one and three in conference play. Benton one and five, one and three in conference play. Cameron two and four on the season, zero oh and four in Midland Empire play. And Bishop LeBlond, they're still looking for their first win. They're zero oh and six on the season, zero oh and four in conference play. And they will take on the Spoof Hounds on Friday night in Maryville in a game you can hear on X106. Wyatt Bell and Sam Steinmeier will be on the call. Pre-game coverage beginning at around 645. Kickoff will follow at 7. A reminder, Maryville football is brought to you by Nottoway Valley Bank. For more information, visit online at nvbank.com. As I said, Sam Steinmeier is going to be on the call here in, well, I guess now about 20, 25 minutes um, for the game against LeBlond. He was also on the call last week uh, against Benton when they took care of business. And uh, Sam, just kind of a welcome to the show. And what did you see from the Spoof Hounds last Friday night? Uh, I saw a lot of good offense uh, from both uh, Eli Dallas and Tyler Houchin especially. You know, they'd like to start out with the run game. They passed a little bit. Uh, Dion Matizer got a catch, and, you know, he's starting to play a little bit more. But it was mostly on the ground just pounding into the Benton defense. Yeah, the Spoof Hounds, they don't really, they, there's no secret of what they want to do. When you have two running backs like Douse and Houchin that can come at you, and Connor Weiss also having some carries offensively as well, and just a really rapid start for them as well on Friday night. Yeah, it was a really fast start. Uh, Eli Dallas, I believe, had three touches. His first three touches were touchdowns, and, you know, if you have that, that's just a weapon that I don't think anyone can stop. Yeah, talk about the defense a little bit. They, they went through a streak there of three, four games in a row where they're pitching shutouts, and they gave up 12 points to, to Cameron a couple weeks ago. But since then, that defense has just been still rock solid all year long. Oh, yeah, the defense is very solid for uh, Maryville. And with the 12 points against Cameron, they were, uh, they were shutting down Cameron, and then some of the backups came in as that game was uh, kind of a blowout. So Coach Webb got the reserves in, and... Cameron was able to pick up some scores, but the Maryville defense is usually very strong, and you know I'd love to see the same for the upcoming weeks. Being a Maryville grad and a townie, and you've been to a handful of the games this year, you've probably seen them more than anyone else in the sports department. Have you kind of seen the team get better each week? Yeah, the team has definitely gotten better each week, and that's kind of the story of every season, really. You usually kind of start out a little slow, and then just kicking into high gear once we get into around this time of year, really uh, looking for that playoff push. So they have uh, Bishop LeBlanc here just shortly. I know it's Bishop LeBlanc, they're 0-6 on the season. Um, can they not overlook them uh, this week since they have the, the rival? Big matchups Savannah coming up the next couple weeks. In, in about next week. Well, I think it's a very real possibility that they could overlook LeBlanc. I don't think that they will because Coach Webb, you know, always preaches, don't overlook your opponent, prepare, prepare, prepare. And, you know, he's really good at getting his team ready for Friday nights. Yeah, and just kind of looking ahead to, I guess, a couple weeks down the road, the last two games of the season at Savannah, at Lafayette, those are games that are going to be very big in the Midland Empire Conference standings. Savannah beat Lafayette earlier on the year, so they have the tiebreaker over Lafayette. But Maryville right now, they pretty much control their own destiny in the conference standings. Yes, they do, and those two games, Savannah and Lafayette, are going to be huge because they're both on the road, and Savannah, you know, it's a big rivalry game. Savannah hasn't beaten us in a while, and they're looking to get the Highway 71 showdown uh, back to Savannah, get that sign back to Savannah. And Lafayette, you know, they're looking for revenge for last year because they very nearly could have beat the Spoof Hounds last year. Unfortunately, they were unable to do so. So both... I look to see both games uh, being very close. Yeah, like I said, a lot on the line here in the next couple of weeks. And uh, like I said, Sam, you've covered, you've seen this team probably more than anyone else around here. And aside from you know the usuals of Dallas and Houch and, and Ben Walker, has there been anybody that's really stuck out to you this year? Honestly, uh, probably Trey Houchin. He's you know sometimes he doesn't get uh, a lot of playing time, but like uh, with these past few games, there've been a few blowouts, especially. Uh, last week, Trey Houchin got some pretty decent amount of carries. He's He scored a touchdown last week. He's been pretty good all season long. Yeah, Bishop LeBlond in town this weekend. Like I said, you're going to be on the call along with Wyatt Bell. And I know you probably maybe haven't done a ton of prep work yet as the show is airing on Wednesday, but I'm sure by Friday you will have. Uh, what are some of the things you're looking for in that game Friday night? 
Well, I'm looking for Eli Dallas to have another big game. That's really, I mean, that's the game plan for the Spoof Hounds to start the running game. Both Eli and Tyler are going to have a decent amount of carries. Tyler's going to pick up the tough yards. Eli's going to show off the speed and elusiveness out uh, on the sidelines and out towards the corner. Ben Walker, I'm not looking for a lot of passing on the Spoof Hounds. Maybe if they get into a third and long situation, if that ever happens, maybe. But other than that, I don't see them passing very much. Talking with Sam Steinmeier, who will be on the call in just a matter of minutes from the Hound Pound as Bishop LeBlond is in town to take on the Spoof Hounds. LeBlond 0-6 on the season, 0-4 in conference play. Maryville 5-1 and on the season, 4-0 and in conference play. Sam Steinmeier and Wyatt Bell will be on the call for tonight's broadcast of Maryville Football, all broadcast Maryville Football, brought to you by Nottoway Valley Bank. For more information, visit online at nvbank.com. Sam, uh, thanks for, for joining us here on This Week in High School Sports, and we know you and White are going to have a great call here in just a matter of minutes, and we'll see what the Spoof can do tonight. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, we're going to take a real quick break. You're listening to This Week in High School Sports on X106. Welcome back to This Week in High School Sports on X106. We are... Not far removed from sending you out to the Hound Pound for a broadcast of Maryville High School football as Bishop LeBlond is in town to take on the Spoof Hounds. Wyatt Bell and Sam Steinmeier will be on the call on X106. Pre-game will begin at about 6.45 or so. Reminder, all broadcasts of Maryville Spoof Hound football are brought to you by Nottoway Valley Bank. For more information, visit online at nvbank.com. Trevor Mater, Kramer Sansone, wrapping up this week's episode of This Week in High School Sports with you, Kramer, back from the beaches of Disneyland in Orlando, Florida. Is it Disneyland in Orlando? Or it's Disney, Disney World? World. One of the two. I've never been to either one, um, but back from the beaches of Disney World in Orlando, Florida, and joining us this week. And what's kind of look ahead to this week, Kramer? You're actually going to have to get out and do some stuff on Friday night instead of just chilling on the beaches like I you was did. A, I was actually on, on a plane most of Whatever. Friday. Same thing. <laughs> Just about the same view, right? Um, let's look at the at the scores or the schedule, I should say, from the 275 conference coming up this week. Mound City they will make the trek to Southwest. That is not right, as they played earlier on this year. I'll get that looked at. Northwest Nottoway is at Northwest Hughesville. East Atchison is at Stewartsville. Platte Valley is at Cab. Rockport is at Southwest Livingston. So that is that is the matchup that I, I meant. I'm not sure why I put Mound City at Southwest Livingston. In the Grand River Conference. Mount City's at um, uh, South Holt. South Holt, not away Holt. That is what I meant. I'm, I'm actually going to go. Be, I That's will be right. There. You will be there on Friday. And I don't know why I put Southwest Livingston on the rundown, but they're not playing Southwest Livingston. They're playing South Holt, not away Holt. So Mount City, South Holt, not away Holt. Northwest, not away Northwest Hughesville. East Atchison, Stewartsville. Platte Valley to Cab. Rockport, Southwest Livingston. Your five slate of games for the 275 Conference. In the GRC, Pattonsburg's taking on Worth County. A big one is Worth County unbeaten. Pattonsburg just one loss. That could be one to maybe decide some, some district seating later on. Also, King City is at Bramer. Stanbury at North Shelby. At North Andrew at Albany. And Oric is at St. Joe. Christian Kramer, let's take a look at the Midland Empire Conference. Yeah, the MEC, we have Bishop LeBlanc taking on the Spoof Hounds. Maryville Spoof Hounds. Once again, Wyatt Bell and Sam Steinmeier will be having the call here on X106. Here, probably about maybe 15 to 20 minutes for the pregame show. Uh, who knows on that time-wise. Um, Savannah is at Chillicothe. Lafayette is at Cameron. And Benton is at St. Pius X. So there's your slate of games. Kramer, when you look at this, like I said, I know you said you're making the trek to Oregon, Missouri, Grand Missouri, I'm not 100% sure. We'll know by that time, or hopefully you'll know by the time this yeah, show airs. I, I hope. I, I believe it'll be in Oregon. Otherwise, you're going to be in for a rude awakening on Friday night. But uh, what's the game you're the mo- looking the most forward to? Uh, Pattonsburg at Worth County. Um, uh, these are two teams that are have shown dominance so far in this uh, in this young season. And, uh, I mean, one's coming in at 5-1, and one, and Worth County coming in at 6-0. and zero. I mean, this could easily be a very good either shootout or it could either be a very good defensive game. Yeah, that's one that I, I'm really stoked to kind of see what happens there. The other one is Rockport at Southwest Livingston because East Atchison, they suffered their second loss uh, in the conference to Mound City. Rockport lost last week as well, but they have just one conference loss. So does Southwest Livingston. So this could potentially decide second place in the 275 and Rockport's not completely out of it yet either as far as the conference standings uh, sit right now if they're able to beat Southwest Livingston and then beat Mound City 
they would be the conference champion despite having two losses. That is a tough hill to climb, but it is still doable. So, yeah, I think those are the, the two big ones this week. Rockport at Southwest Livingston and Pattonsburg at Worth County. Also, I think you're going to have an interesting one in Mountain City at South Holt and Ottaway Holt. Uh, Mountain City has been the cream of the crop in the 275 this year. But South Holt and Ottaway Holt, they've kind of found a groove lately, and they've got an offense that's not afraid to score some points. So who knows what happens there. I'm not saying the Spartans are going to pull off the upset. But I'm not saying it would surprise me if they're able to give him a run. I'm just hoping for a great game, honestly. Uh, Mount City is the top teams. Uh, South Holt and Ottawa Holt, I mean, I've seen them before. They know how to score, and they know how to score a lot. So it depends if Quinlan can get the get some scores on quick on Mount City. But, I mean, who knows? Anything can happen on a Friday night under the lights. I mentioned earlier there are a little bit of changes in the straight-up sports power rankings from this week. There's a new number one in town, the Worth County Tigers are now number one, Stanbury ranked number two, Mount City three, Pattonsburg four, Southwest Livingston five, King City six, East Atchison seven, North Andrew eight, Rockport nine, Oric ten. Just four teams remain unbeaten in eight-man action, Worth County, Stanbury, Mount City, and Oric. And uh, Kramer, like I said, Worth County, they're the new number one. I haven't seen Worth County this year. I saw them last year, and that was one of the best eight-man teams I've ever seen. This team, just on paper, looks like it could be just as good, and they're going to have a colossal showdown in a couple weeks. Yeah, um, uh, one of the things that I see during this, the, how their rankings are in straight-up sports, is uh, why is Orc at 6-0 and oh and they're 10th? I, I, you, you would it, think yeah, with that I, record, I think you put them at 5 I or 6? I think it's one of those things, uh, as far as the eight-man action in Southern Missouri, we don't know a lot about. And you look at their district, the teams in their district are also some of the teams that are in their conference, and they're 3-3, mm-hmm. 2-3, three and 1-4, three, and 0-6, and oh and so... Not quite as strong as it has been up here, but still, you got you, you could say, okay, well, you know, they could be sixth or seventh. If I was ranking them, and I'm not, I think Worth County, Stanbury are, are one, two are correct. I might flip Pattonsburg and Mound City, and then I'd go, I think, Southwest Livingston, King City. I might flip North Andrew and East Atchison, and then I'd probably flip Oric and Rockport as well. But, uh, yeah, that's I think Worth County right now, they might be the best team, but we're going to find out in a couple weeks when they take on Stanbury. Just three weeks of regular season action left, Kramer. We got this week and then two others to follow, and then we roll into the postseason. There are four districts in eight-man play this year. Three of them comprised of six teams. One of them comprised of five teams. And uh, the districts, we'll just run through the district pairings right now. In District 1, you got Stanbury, Worth County, East Hatchison, Rockport, Albany, and Northwest Nottoway. District 2, Mount City, North Andrews, South Holt, Nottoway Holt, DeKalb, Platte Valley, and St. Joe Christian. District 3, Pattonsburg, Southwest Livingston, North Shelby, King City, Stewartsville, and Bramer. And District 4, Oric, Norborn, Hardin Central, Northwest Hughesville, Osceola, and Chilhowee. So when I look at these, District 1, whoever comes out of that district is going to have earned it. Stanbury, Worth County, they're the one and two seed right now. As I mentioned, they'll meet in week nine. Whoever wins that is going to be the district champion. But then you've got East Atchison and Rockport, who met earlier on this year. Albany's been playing good ball as of late, and Northwest Nottoway, kind of a younger team. They sit at 0-6 right now, but you think Stanbury and Worth County have got to be the favorites, but, man, East Atchison and Rockport and Albany, those are some good teams as well. Uh, the way that East Atchison has played the past three to four weeks, they have earned what they are right now as they're ranked third. Uh, I honestly could see them contending with, with Worth or Stanbury, possibly. I mean, anything's a little bit different in this uh, in District 1. Anything can actually happen with all these teams. Looking at District 2, Mound City, they're the only uh, team with a record above 500 right now. They're 6-0. and North Andrew and South Holton, Nowway Holder, both 3-3. Three and three. DeKalb, 2-4. and four. Platte Valley, 1-5. and five. St. Joe Christian, 0-5. Oh so, Mound City is going to be the favorite in that district. They've pretty much already locked up the top seed in that district. But don't sleep on North Andrew. They're, they hung with Stanbury. They had an opportunity to win that game. Came up just a tad short. They still got Albany and Worth County on their schedule to end the season. So, who knows what the record is going to look like by the time we get there. But I think this is a team that could surprise some people come postseason. And also, South Holt and Ottaway Holt is a team that they could end up being the two seed. Their schedule just a, a tad easier than North Andrews down the stretch. Um, so do not sleep on the Spartans either. And if they can pick up the win over Mound City this week, that would be huge. It'd be, it'd or be, even just playing with them would it, be huge. It would be very huge. You also can't – don't skip it on DCAB, honestly. The way they yeah. played the past two weeks, uh, if they found their groove and know what they're about to do, uh, watch out for all these. District 3, Pattonsburg is the one seed. They're 5-1. and one. South of Livingston also 5-1. and one. North Shelby 5-1. and one. King City 3-3. Three and three. Stewartsville 1-5. and five. Bramer 0-6. Oh 
I'm high on Pattonsburg this year. I, I don't know what it is about them. We talked to their coach Chase Roberts a couple weeks ago. They're kind of they're my type of team. They're going to throw the ball a lot. They want to put up some points, and uh, they were able to beat King City on this this year. I think those two. I don't know enough about North Shelby. I'll be honest with you, but I think King City and Pattonsburg are the two best teams in that district. South Livingston is probably right there as well. But I think this is Pattonsburg's district for the taking if they can take advantage of it. There are three teams that are five and one. That's, the, that's the, bananas. The, this. It honestly could go between either of these three teams. Yeah. And I feel like if Pattonsburg does win or lose I, and Southwest Livingston win or lose, that's, that'll change some things up. Yeah, it'll be it'll be wild. District 4 is a district that, uh, I'll be honest with you, we don't really know much about because none of these teams are, are in the conferences that we focused on this year. But Oric is at 6-0. and Norborn Harden Central is at 3-3. Three and three, Northwest Hughesville is 2-3. and three, Osceola, 1-4. and four, Chilhowee. Oh, and six. I think this is Oregon's district for the taking too. If I had to, if I had to predict the district semifinals in Missouri, it's it's weird how they do them. I figured it'd be District One against District Four, District Two against District Three. I was informed, nope, it is District One against District Three, District Two against District Four. We're still a couple weeks away, but if I had to kind of forecast it, you know, I would say the winner of Stanbury Worth County is probably going to get Pattonsburg, and. Mound City is probably going to get Oric, but uh, still three weeks left of action to figure things out. Yeah, seriously, anything can happen between these next three weeks. Uh, uh, Stanbury versus Pattonsburg would be a nice game to watch, or even if it's Worth County versus Southwest Livingston, it could be a, it's going to yeah. be a very good game to watch. Yeah, Stanbury and Pattonsburg, they played each other a couple weeks ago, and uh, it was a close game going into the fourth quarter, and then Stanbury just went insane and won 84-46, to so... Yeah, a lot of a lot of things going on in the next couple of weeks. It'll all shake itself out, and soon we will know which teams look like they are destined to be playing in the eight-man championship in November. That'll do it for this week's episode of This Week in High School Sports. A huge thank you to our guests today as we were able to catch up with the camp head coach, Caleb Wardlow, and King City head coach, Micah Breckenridge. Reminder to tune in to Maryville football here in just a matter of moments. Pre-game will begin beginning momentarily. Wyatt Bell and Sam Steinmeier will be on the call from the Hound Pound as Benton is in town. Reminder that all Maryville broadcast all broadcasts Maryville High School Sports are brought to you by Nowe Valley Bank. For more information, visit online at nvbank.com. So why don't we send it out there to the Hound Pound as you've been listening to This Week in High School Sports on X106.